Greetings, our Hebrews, like brothers and sisters. This is the high priest, L.D. Smith, the watchman on the wall. All family, all family, all family. Grab that King James boy because we got a fantastic teaching tonight, as always. We love you guys. We love you guys. And we're going to keep it moving. All praise, all praise. Now, you guys know how we do it here. I actually got guys to read along with me. I actually got guys to think about. Think about the words that are coming out of your mouth. You know, I know that the most High will give you clear understanding. Now, family, that being said, I think I named this one right here. Remember now thy creator. All right? But we're still dealing with that, whole, that old heart now, okay? We're still dealing with that heart. But that, that title, we're going to read here. And as I stated, I want you guys to read with me. Think about the reading. Listen to the words. All right? And I know that you will get a clear understanding. Now, we're going we're gonna to go here to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I'm just going to take something out of here. And I want you to insert this in your mind. And I want you to think about this. All night, every night, and every day. All right? Here we go. Verse 12 in Ecclesiastes chapter 1. It says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. But family, what I want to extract out of, the, out of there is the first few words that begin in this paragraph here. Remember. Now thy creator in the days of thy youth. All right? I want you, I, I want you to understand that. See, because back in our days, when our elders was around and we was in our own land, we was taught from, from a child up to a teenage and on, on up till we got grown, we was taught the word of of one God. Huh? It wasn't no several gods that we was with. We had one God and we was among only our people. That's why he says, separate yourself. I have separated you. Why? Because if, I, if you hang around duty, you'll get duty on you. That's why he says, don't let your sons and your daughters marry strange, strange nations. Marry those that are in your circle. Marry your, those that are in your same bloodline. That way you keep on producing the same thing. See, but like if the seed get corrupted, then you can't produce that no more. You got to wait, you got to wait, you got to wait until it keep on, keep on going with those that are, are, are the original. And then sooner or later on down the road, then it'll come back to its original form. But it may take a while. But see here, remember him. Now, let us go and look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Now, we talked about this in, in another teaching, but we're going to look at it again. 11, let's begin with verse 7. It says, truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Verse 9, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thine heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. But know that, but know thou, that all these things God will bring thee into judgment. And you see, that's why I start off with. Verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse 1. 
Remember now that I created them. See, when you are in your youth, not only in your youth, you got to be when you when you get old. You have to remember the Lord, our creator. Why? Because he does all these things. He wants the best for us. Huh? He wants us to obey his word. We obey his word, then he's pleased with us. He rewards us. But when we don't do his word, and we anger him, then that that he has given us, he takes away and gives to, gives to another. And then where you was on top and you was the head and not the tail, now you are the tail and someone else is the head. Where you was above only and not beneath, now you are beneath only and not above. This is what he does to us when we disobey his word. We have to obey his word. Now, let us keep on going here now. We're going we're gonna to go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter uh, 4. Let's go there real quick. Proverbs chapter 4. Now, watch here. Chapter 4. Let's look at let's look at verse um verse 23 and 24. Okay, let's Okay. Let's back up. We need to back up to verse 20. Let's look at 4 and 20. It says, "My son, attend unto my words." Incline thine ears unto my sins. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. See that? Everything that he says is all, I mean, it's all about what he says. All about his word. He said, keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. See that? When you when you find that word, when you obey that word, you listen to it, you, you obey it, and you do it. He says here, all good things going to happen to you. He says, for they are life unto those what? My words, my sayings, they're life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart diligence, because out of it are all the things that you could imagine all the things that is done in your life, whether you are in the driver's seat or whether you're a passenger, it is your choice. Huh? See, because if you are in the driver's seat, then you, you, you're you going to take this word and you're going to keep this word in the midst of your heart. But then, but like, if you are, if you are in the passenger's seat, then you let all this stuff that is not the word come out of your heart and it's driving you. It's driving you every, everywhere. And then you try to figure out, how did I get myself in this? Because you weren't in the word. You didn't keep his word in the midst of your heart. I mean, it's not a hard thing to do. But are you willing? Do you want to do this? See, because if you, if you practice it, then you would do it. But if you don't practice it, how can you do it? That's the, uh, that's the million dollar question. If you don't practice it, how can you do it? Now, let's keep on going. 
He says, verse 24, say, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. See that? It's about what comes out your mouth. Huh? And see, one may say, well, uh, uh, well, you're using foul language. No, no, that's not what he's talking about. That when you are saying perverse things, you are saying that God can't do this. And then God can do it. Are you saying what somebody else is saying and not saying what God is saying? Huh? See, because if you say it, you'll do it. You will. You say, if you say something long enough, sooner or later, you'll find yourself doing it. I don't care who you are. Say it long enough. See what you, see what you find yourself doing it. And somebody may have to come up to you and tap you. Hey, man. Do you see what you're doing? You said that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See? Somebody brings it to your attention. Why? Because it wasn't in your heart. I mean, you didn't have it in your heart not to do it. You said it that you wasn't going to do it because you changed your mind. But when you guard your heart, that won't come out because it won't, it won't ever get to your mind. But if you let it out, then it's going to go to your mind. And when it goes to your mind, you're going to speak it. You're going to say it. That's why the Most High God told Jeremiah, don't say that you are a little child. I, I, have, I have put my word in your mouth. And, and you shall go. Every place I send you, and you shall speak what I have said to you. See that? That's how it works. There is a way that we talk, or we should talk. Instead of all this, all praise to the Most High. All every every time, every word, all praise to the Most High. But but uh, are you doing His word? Are you saying His word? Are you practicing his word? That's what you need to ask yourself. And if the answer is no, then, and it probably is, then you need to, you, you need to, to do what? Start practicing his word. Because when you're practicing, you're doing it. And you keep on practicing, you keep on practicing, keep on practicing, then what? It just comes natural. I want to do right. See that? It ain't hard. But see, but if you want to do what you want to do, then it becomes hard. Because he said that our ancestor, he said, you won't obey my voice. You won't listen to what I said, neither will you obey my voice. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's keep on going. Look what he said. Now I'm going I'm to I'm jump down to, um, well, let's do 25, 26, and 27. Let's do it all. Let that eyes look right on, and let that eyelids look straight before thee. See that? You got to be focused. You got to be focused. You got to be thinking about how, how you're going to do this. You got to be thinking about, what steps are you going to take in order to to achieve what you have to do? I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at anything that's going to distract me. And, and yes, there's a, there's a lot of things that is going on in this life that will distract you. But you can't have no distractions. You can't. You got to look, you got to look straight. I mean, I ain't, I ain't looking at nothing but the most high. I'm looking at his word. I'm going straight. Now, look what he says here. He says, um, Ponder the path of thy feet 
and let all thy ways be established. See that? Ponder. Think about it. Think about it. Think about if. No, that don't sound right. I ain't going to do that. See, when you do it like that, when you do it like that, he says, your ways shall be established. I mean, one can't, one can't get lost doing this. It's almost virtually impossible to get lost. But I know that that, that, that it can't happen. Why? Because my ancestors got lost. But you can see how the, how the roadmap is. He says, ponder the path of that feet. What you, what you use your feet to do? Go. go. Go what? Go your ways in life. Go your ways in life. You see, he said, think, think about it. Let all that ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. See that? Remove thy feet. What, what does your feet do? Your feet carries you through life. It is your ways, your ways, the things that you do. Then he says, Move your feet from evil. Move it. If you move your feet from evil, then you can no longer be doing evil because you have changed your position. You have. You have changed your position. So how can you still be doing evil? Evil is over there, but you over here. You're doing the word of God now. You're walking in his ways. Now, let's keep on going here. Let's go to Genesis. Now, watch this right here. Genesis chapter, chapter 12. Let's, let's get over there. Genesis chapter 12. Now, I'm going to show you guys something here. No, Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. Take my time. I'm going to get there. Mm-hmm. Now, watch this right here. I'm going to show you all something. Genesis chapter 20. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they on, they on the move. All right? Now, let's begin with verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1, and then we're going to get on down to, um, to the nitty-gritty. Okay. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwell in, he dwell between Kadesh and Cush, Shush, and journey into Gerea. And Abraham said unto Sarah his wife, she's my sister, and Abimelech king of Gerea uh, sent to uh, sit and took, took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, but a woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not came near her, and he said, Lord, Will thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she's my sister, and she even she herself integrated of my heart and in in innocence, I think that's innocent. Of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in the dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. 
Therefore suffer, I thee not to touch him. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die. Thou and all that are thine. You're going to kill all of them. Therefore, Abimelech rose up early in the morning and called in all his servants and told all these things in their ear. And the men were so afraid. But see, now, uh, Abimelech said that uh, I didn't know this. I was ignorantly uh, led to believe this. He says, uh, in the integrity of of my heart, uh, I wouldn't do nothing like this. But see, it's all about what's in your heart, whether you want to do right. So so God knew his heart. Y'all heard the reading. Y'all read along with me. He says, and God says, I suffer you not to touch her. Huh? See, so you can see here that even, even though in his heart, he did not have that. He did not want that, right? He didn't want that. Now, let's keep on going now. We're going to keep on going. Let's, let's keep on going. Then, then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And, and what have I offended thee that thou hast bought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And he's saying here, what did I do to you for you to um, uh, do what you did to me? You don't you have to bring this evil on me. You don't have to tell me a lie. But now you have brought this all, this evil, this sin upon me and my kingdom. That was uncalled for. You didn't have to do that. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, what sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. See that? And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass. We're going to keep on going. We're going on 13. And it came to pass when God caused, when God cursed, cursed me to wander from my father's house, caused me, caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, this is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me at every place wherewith we shall shall come. Say of me, he's my brother. And see, here's the, here, here's the problem. You cause that. You cause all that. Because you didn't believe God. He didn't. He caused all this because he wasn't trusting in God. So if he had a trusted God, he'd have went on in there. Whatever happened, it, it happened. Why? Because God is with me. God told me to leave my father and mother house. So I left, and then I'm on my journey. God told me wherever I, I go, he was going to be with me. So uh, Abraham, you caused this because you had doubt in your heart. You had doubt in your heart, and you spoke it out of your heart. You told her, wherever so we go, you tell them, huh, I'm your brother, and you my sister. So you can see here how he left the word of God not, not speaking the word of God. But he spoke his own mind. 
And see, that's how you get in trouble. You got to say what God says. If God says, I'm going to be with you, then you say, God is with me. I'm going. And you, my wife, and God is the one that, that is going to have to protect us. Not me lying and changing God's word, changing God's program. We're trying to change it. But you see here, you caused this. Now, let's keep on going here. Why? Because his heart wasn't right. Let's go back to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. Now, watch this right here. Proverbs chapter 3. Now, watch this right here. Now, we're going to read all this right now. Okay? We're going to read all this right here. We're going we're gonna to go down to, to um, verse 7, and then we're going to stop there. All right? It says, My son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments for lengthening of days and long in life and peace shall they add unto thee. If Abraham had done what God said, none of this would have taken place. None of it. If he had kept God's word in his heart, none of this would have took place because they would have been afraid of God. Did y'all hear Abimelech say, Lord? Did y'all hear him say, Lord? Because he knew about him. Just, and, and see, that shows you. Just because you don't know something, that don't mean that God has not already taken care of. You just don't know. But Abimelech already knew about, about the Most High. He called him Lord. And told him I was tricked. I was tricked into thinking that that was his sister. Now watch her now. He says, "Let not mercy and truth forsake thee." What? Truth, mercy, and truth forsake you. Don't let it leave you. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of who? And who? It's right there in the pages. It's right there in the pages. If he had kept truth and mercy in his heart, when he came there before Abimelech and told Abimelech that, that that's his wife, Abimelech would have gave him favor. Y'all see that? But Abimelech acted the way he acted because Abraham had not told him the truth. Neither Sarah. He says him, understanding in the sight of God and man. Watch this right here. Trust in who? See that? If Abraham had a, had a, had a trust in God wholeheartedly, with all his heart, that would never happen. Because God, God was going to take care of him anyway. God was going to take care of him anyway, even though Abraham had to, Abraham had to, had to pray for him because he he shut up all the women's womb there uh, and he cursed his whole his his whole kingdom. But Abraham prayed for him and God lifted the curse up off of it. But Abraham caused this why? Because he did not trust in the Lord with all of his heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto what? I thought that uh, uh, if uh, I told them that she was my wife, they would have killed me because of her. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought. Yeah, that's what happens. 
I thought. And you see, it's right in the pages. I ain't making up nothing. It's right in the pages. It's right in the pages. That's what he talks about when you don't understand what God says and then you go off on your own thing and you start saying things that God didn't say. You start, instead of you letting God be God and you trusting God with all your heart, soul, and mind, you started, well, I thought that if uh, I didn't know that whether the fear of God was here or not, and I thought that they might kill me because, yeah, see, you thought that. But you forgot about God. Why is it so easy for us to forget about what God has said to us? I know what God told me. Even though I've had a lot of bumpy roads, I've had a lot of mishaps, but God God has not changed. God, has, God hasn't changed. He's still going to do what he said he was going to do. He said, go into the house of Israel. That's what I'm doing. Told me to go. He didn't tell me to take nobody with me. He said, you go. And warn them of me. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm getting your heart right. I'm getting you to see because the, the, the word will come and correct me, you, all of us. But see, but he's telling us, don't be, uh, 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 well, I thought this or I thought that. No, it's, it, it's what I say. I told you not to lean to your own understanding. Now look what he says here. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Did God tell me to do this? Did the Most High tell me to do that? No, he, no, 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 no. He told you, I'm going to be with you. And he shall direct thy path. It's simple. He shall direct thy path. You can't get around it. There's a way that he does things. He's not going to change it for me. He's not going to change it for you. Be not wise in thy own eyes. I figured out. I figured this out. Mm-hmm. If I do this, then uh, I know that'll happen. And if I do this, mm-mm. No, you're not. You're digging a hole for your own self because you're going to fall in it. You are digging a hole for your own self because you are the one that's going to fall in it. Because you've been wise in your own eyes. When you be wise, when you lie and say God said this, or God said that, or God, you know, people are quick to say, well, God said this. No, 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 no. If the most I hadn't told you nothing, then don't you, don't you tell it. And not just like, the time that I, I, I when I first started, I, I, I told him, I said, uh, I think I'm from Judah. Uh, I'm from Judah. I'm from Judah. And uh, it was an individual that that heard what I said, and you know, he remembered it. And then there was a time when God came and told me when I was laying down upstairs in my bed, he told me, he said, he said, Aaron, he said, Aaron is your granddaddy, Moses is your uncle. And I told my wife, I said, uh, God just told me who I was. In the very next video I made, and I named it, God told me who I was. And the day it post, that individual jumped up, brought it, brought it back to my, my remembrance. Well, you said that you, you were from Judah. I said, that's right. I did say that. Yes, I said that. I said that I thought I was from Judah. Yes, I said that. But what I'm saying now is what God said. I, I, I'm telling you now that God told me who I was. I ain't hear no more from him. 
I, 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 I didn't hear no, no more from him. Why? Because he made a distinction between what I said and what God said. So he left it alone. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You saying now God told you. But at first you said what? That you thought that you was from Judah. Yeah. But look what he says. Uh, Be not wise in their own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Y'all see that? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now let's keep on going. Now we gonna we, we gonna we gonna go to we gonna stay in Proverbs. Now because uh, we gonna deal with this right here. We we still dealing with his heart. Proverbs chapter chapter twenty three. Now watch this right now, family. Watch this. Oh, let's do Proverbs chapter twenty three. Oh, let's look at verse twenty six. And I think we're going to close on, on that one, family, I believe. We're going to close on that one. Okay. Okay, now, here, let's, let's go back up here. Okay, now watch this right here now. Let's read verse 20, 20, uh, 22. We're in 23, 22. It says, Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Y'all see that? Now some 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 is saying that uh that uh, uh uh God has a wife, and that uh when it talks about the mother, it's talking about wisdom, and then that that, that God is their father, and they get, and they're talking about God father and mother mother of heaven and queen of heaven, all kind of foolishness. How can you say that this is talking about some other entity than a human being? We're the, we're the only ones that is young at, at one age, at one time, and then at another time, we get old. Huh? If this was talking about wisdom, wisdom was here before God made anything. So wisdom is already old, so it can't be wisdom. Because it says, when she gets old. But see, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, I am so afraid for some people. I, honestly, I am. I'm, I, I am so afraid. But that's what he told me to do. Warn them of him. When the most I come back, he's not going for no foolishness. If your heart is not right, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. You are going to be in trouble when he come back. Now let's keep on going. It says, don't despise that mother when she is old. By the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instructions and understanding. The father of the righteousness shall greatly rejoice. He shall, uh, he, uh, and he that begot a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and shall they bear thee shall joy. My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. See that? He's talking about two different individuals here. He's talking about your earthly father. Now he's talking about himself. He says, for a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lies in wait as for a prey and increases the transgression among men. But I just want to show you guys this right here. You guys see here, verse 26, it says, My son, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. He's talking about himself there, and he's talking about 
the father, how the, how the father and the mother raises the child and give them instruction. On who? On him. Then when he gets up to be one, he says, just like you say, my son, attend unto my word. He says, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. He's talking about two different things here. But if one don't understand, then they'll say, oh, well, all it's about here is, and then they start putting words in there. You know, just because wisdom is, is mentioned in there, understanding is mentioned in there too. What you going to do about that? Oh, but w wisdom has to be the mother. Well, what you going to, well, then who is understanding? But you let somebody just tell you anything and all praise, all praise, all praise, and then you don't give it even any kind of thought. But let's keep on going. Well, we got to break off there. We're we going to break off there. We stopped at um, Proverbs 26, and I mean, 23 in, in, in verse 20 to 26. But anyway, family, you guys know how to do it at the end of the broadcast. We come together, one voice with one mind, on the count of three. One word, one God, one people, one love. Leave <laughs> back. Praise God, praise God, praise Until next time, we say shalom, family, we love you. Get some rest.